Welcome to this WiseL tutorial on linking to CSV files in Python. Here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. So we'll begin with a quick warning about pandas just to check you're watching the right tutorial. And then we'll go on to look at how you can write CSV files and how you can read them back in again. CSV stands for comma separated values, by the way. We'll then look at how you can use something called a dict reader in a CSV module. And what that allows you to do is to reach each, read each row of a file into its own separate dictionary. And finally, I'll look at what I think is a more useful technique, which is reading a CSV file normally and reading, adding each row into a dictionary that you've created. At the top right of the screen, you'll see a link appearing about now, and you'll be able to click on that to see any files or exercises to do with this tutorial. But, as always, I'm going to vanish now, and Sven will take you through the rest of the proceedings. Over to Sven. So let's get started. So I'd like to begin this tutorial with a very quick warning about pandas. Uh, not those pandas, pandas the module in Python. And it's this, that if you're importing a table of CSV data into a pandas data frame, there's a much easier way to do it in pandas than what I'm about to show you in this tutorial. But if all you know about pandas is they're black and white cuddly bears from China, then please watch on. So for the examples for this tutorial, we're going to look at reading and writing out the names of our wretched cats, I'm afraid. So it's time to meet them again. They are, if you remember, Annie, who's a tortoiseshell cat, and her brother, Neo, who's black and white. He looks mostly black there, but there are quite a few white bits as well. So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is write out and read in a list of our cats. There's going to be three columns, uh, the cat name, which will be what the cat's called, the color, and when the date of birth is. I'm going to assume the cats were all born on 15th of August, 2019. They were certainly born on the same day, but it was sometime in August. I forget exactly when, but I feel that's not vital for this tutorial. So what we're going to do is create a new file called writingcsvfiles.py. And the first thing I'm going to do is import the CSV module. This is a built-in module, so there's nothing to install. And it allows us easily to work with reading and writing from and to, or to and from, CSV files. So I'm going to open up a file for writing. And you can do that in the standard way by saying with, open. And then I'll put a little R in, so I don't have to escape my uh, backslash characters. And then put the specification of where the file is. And I need to include a second argument, which is W. Otherwise, I'll be reading it. So W means write, if you remember. A means append. I want to overwrite it each time I create it, so I've used W. And I'll call that cat file. So now I've got that open, what I want to do is create something called a CSV writer. And that will allow me to write out easily to a CSV file. And to do that, I'll create a new variable called writer and I will set it equal to a CSV writer based on the file I've just created. And then I can start writing out my information. So firstly, I'll write out the header. And to do that, I can say writer.writeRow. And what I need to do is provide it with an iterable object. So what I'm going to do is pass in a list of things. Um, the first thing will be the heading cat name. And I'll have the heading um, color, and then I'll have date of birth. After writing that out of the file, I can now write the actual cats. That again, I can put writer.writero. And I can write out the first cat, who is called Annie. I'll put that in quotation marks just to show you shouldn't be too afraid of those. Those, she's tortoise shell. Uh, born allegedly on 2019-08-15. What I needed to do was to include that in square brackets to make it an iterable object, otherwise it won't be accepted by the right row command. And what I'll now do is just amend that slightly to get Neo. And Neo is black and white and was born on the same date. Say so it's finished. And just to prove this has finished my writing, I'll print out a message saying that's it. 
What I can try doing now is to run this program. Uh, so if I press or control N as always, I get the message that's it, and I get a list of cats. Now you can see that it's overwritten the file because I've got a different version. I've got blank row, alternate blank rows. And the reason I got this is I didn't add an additional argument when I was creating the file, which is to say that when I create a new line, I should use uh, a blank string for a new line character. So if I run that again now, and again have a look at my cats.txt, it's refreshed automatically, which is quite clever, and it gives me the list of cats. So that's how you can write a file in CSV. I guess one question I would ask is, is there really so much benefit in doing that over uh, just using a standard text writer? I can't actually really see the difference between the two at all. And it's only really when you start using dictionaries, as we will later in this tutorial, that you'll probably derive much benefit from using the CSV module. So having written out a list of cats, let's read them back in again. So we're going to look at reading CSV files, and I've created a, a program to that effect. So what we can begin by doing is importing the CSV module. And then what I want to do is open the text file for reading this time. So to do that, I can say with, open, and then in quotation marks, I can add in the path to the file. I need an R before it to avoid escaping the characters. And I'll call that cat file again. Why waste a good variable name? So what I can now do is create a CSV, CSV reader based on this. I'll call my variable reader. I don't have to, that's just a good variable name. So I'll take my CSV module and apply a reader to that. And what this will do is make it slightly easier to read in the CSV data than if it was just a standard text file. But as before, it really is only slightly easier. So what I'm now going to do is to read in the header. Uh, CSV files always assumed to have a header row. So to do that, I'll create a variable called header and read in the next line from the reader. That's how you do that. And just to prove this has worked, let's print out the header. And because I'm a great believer in testing things as I'm writing them, if we run that program, you'll see I get my header containing a list of the three headings. So what I can now do is, I'm just going to comment that out because I don't want that anymore. What I'm now going to do is to read in the rest of the lines. So I'm going to say for row in reader. So it's just like for a normal file, this will automatically go over the rows one at a time. The only difference is the row is defined as a CSV row and will automatically uh, contain a list of all the items within it. So just to show what it's going to do, I'll just print out the row without any modifications at all for the moment. And if we run that, you'll see it gives me the list of the cat name, color, and date of birth. To extract those bits of information, what I'm going to do is unpack that each of those lists. So I'll set three variables called cat name, color, and DOB, and set them equal to the row. So now if I print out those bits of information, so, and run the program, then you should see that I'm getting the three bits of information separately. And I could stop there, but I'm conscious many people work with dates in CSV files, so I just thought I'd show you how you can convert this date of birth into a proper date so we can format it. So to do this, you'll almost certainly need to use the date time module, but actually, I'll just import the date time function or element within that. So from the date time module, I'll just import date time. I've done a separate tutorial on working with dates and times, but this is just the bit we need for this um, program. So what I'll now do is extract the date as a date. So I'll create a new variable called date of birth. I'll take the date time module, and because this is a well-behaved uh, date, I won't have to use the strp time function, which allows you to specify what date format string you're using, and it's far more complicated. It's the exact analogy of the strf time function. So if you've watched my date time tutorial, you can just follow the same procedure as I described there. But because this is a nice, easy format, I can use the from iso format function and just specify where the date string is held and that should extract it as a date. And I think the final thing we should do is print this out in a nice way. So I'm going to print out um, the following message. Uh, the name of the cat, I'll put that there. Its color, which will go as a second placeholder, 
and was born in, and I do mean in, and I'll put the third placeholder there. And then I can supply the missing bits, which are the cat name, the color, and the date of birth. All goes well. When I run that program, you can see a message saying that each cat was born on the same day. And you can see this has been recognized as a date. I wanted actually to show the month. So the last thing I'm going to do with this is just format this a bit better. So put date time dot, and then I will use the strf time function I mentioned earlier. And I'll format it using percent %b, which will give me the month name, and then percent %y, which will give me the year number. And now if I run that, um, it's complaining about my brackets. I need one more. If I run that, then you will get was born in and you get the month and the year nicely formatted. What I'm going to do now is to use a dict reader. That's why I've created a file called using dictreader.py to read in the cat. And I want to show you how it works and discuss whether it's actually worth it or not. So we're going to import the CSV module. And then as always, we're going to open up the cat's file for reading. So to do this, I can say with open, type in an R and copy in the path. And I'll call that cat file as it's now becoming traditional. So what I'm going to do now is to create a dictionary reader and I'll call it cats. And to do that, I will use a dict reader method and I'll pass in the name of the file it's based on. So what that will do is read through uh, the lines in the CSV file and read each of them into a dictionary. So what I can now do is print out those lines and discuss whether this is a useful thing to do. So I can say for cat in cats. And what I'll do for each row is um, print out the information. I'm going to print out two things, actually. I want to show the type of the row to prove it is a dictionary, and then, then the row itself. So if I now run that, you should see it gives me a list of the cats. It doesn't include the headers because it automatically works out they should be used to create the names for the dictionary keys, but it creates um, one, out for each row, it creates one separate dictionary. And the keys for those dictionaries should be the names of the fields at the top. So we've got cat name, color, and date of birth. Is this a useful thing to be able to do? I'm not so sure. Apart from the fact each row is a separate dictionary, I've also got the problem that when everything's finished, when all's done and dusted, if I try to print out the cat's uh, dictionary, I'll get not quite an error message, but something close to it. Um, because this is just a dictionary reader, it's not a dictionary itself. And so all you can do is step through it line by line. So I personally don't think dictionary readers are very useful. And what I'm now going to do is show you an alternative way just using a normal CSV reader, which I think works much better. But judge for yourself. So what we're going to do now is to read in the rows of data from our cats file into a dictionary. So I've already imported the CSV file or module rather in a new file called reading using dictionaries.py. And I'm now going to open the file. So say with open, put in the file path. And I'll call that create a CSV reader based upon that. So to do that, I'll call my variable reader and I'll type csv.reader and use the cat file. I'm going to discard the header row. I'm not going to use it at all. So I'll set, in fact, let's not, to prove I'm going to discard it, I'll use the temporary variable name of an underscore, which is a sign that you don't want to keep something. And I will take the next row from the reader. What I can then do is loop over all the rows. But just before I do that, let's create a dictionary to hold the cats. And to do that, I'm going to call it cats. And I can set that to be, uh, the, the curly brackets denote either dictionary or set, and Python determines which from the context. So now I can loop over the rows. Do that, I can say for, let's call it row in uh, my reader. So that's in a reader. And what I'm going to do is unpack this row as I did before to the three different parts, which are the cat name, the color, and the date of birth. So I'll set that equal to row. 
So I've now got those three bits of information. And what I can now do is add them to the, add this to the dictionary using the cat name as a key. So to do this, I can set the add an item to the cat's dictionary using the cat name as a key and set it equal to a tuple or a list. I'll use a tuple in this case, containing all of the other bits of information. So I guess someone criticizing this method could say, well, I've had to work out what the fields are, how many there are. It's none of it's automated. But surely when you're passing a CSV file, you have to do that anyway, I would have thought. So I've now got a full dictionary of all the cats. And what I can now do when all this is said and done is print out the dictionary. Dictionary. So I could say for key comma value in cats.items, not forgetting the open close brackets. And this is a way of printing out the value of every single item in the dictionary. And what I'll do is print out the key, which will be the cat, and the value, which will be all the other information like the color and the date of birth. So if I run that program, you can see it gives me the information I want. So the great thing about this, of course, is I can get information on a specific cat. So let's do that. Let's suppose I want to get the information on Neo. Then I can print out information on the item in the dictionary with that particular key. I've got to be slightly careful because Neo had a single inverted comma around it like that. But if I run that, you can see it gives me the information on Neo. He's black and white and when he was born. So I think this way of uh, getting information from a CSV file is probably much more useful and practical, but I'll leave you to decide that for yourself. And that's really most of the things you can do with CSV files.